Hi, today I'm going to do a really nice spring summery look for more mature ladies, so say over 55. And this would be a great look for either mother of the bride or a wedding guest or any summer party that you might be going to. I have a fantastic model today. She's gorgeous. It's actually Jessie's mum, Jessie who works with me. It's her mum and um, we were just laughing because let's hope Jessie's boyfriend doesn't see this and think that we're trying to drop him a hint. So I'm going to start by using Ember Elise. Um, you have a more of a dry skin, don't you? Yeah. So I think we'll start with a nice good layer of moisturization and let that really sink in. Have you ever tried this? No, not that cream. one. Oh, it's a nice one. Feels lovely. Feels mm. nice, but it's actually really light. So it doesn't, it's a good base for makeup, I find. So next I'm going to use the Face and Body Foundation by MAC. This needs a really good shake before you apply it. This has been around for years, but it's one of my favorite foundations because it hasn't got any SPF in, so it's perfect if you're going to be photographed a lot. It's very light, so it's great for mature skin because it doesn't kind of get stark in any little lines or doesn't give you that sort of cakey feel. And it has a lovely luminous finish as well. I like to apply this foundation with fingers because it's so liquidy. I almost apply it as if I'm applying a face cream. And I just find that it, for me, that's the way it applies best. And you can feel it as you're massaging it in. You can really massage it, but then you start to feel it setting. And this is great because it has a film former in, which means that once it's set, it stays put. And it's sweat resistant and um, you can't kind of rub it off. So it's good if you need to you know, have it in place all day. And I love the finish. Very glowy. I'm also going to do a little bit on neck. Depends what you're wearing, obviously. If you're wearing something which is low cut, then you can use it on your chest. And it is body makeup, so if you need to use it on legs as well, or arms, you can. So for concealer, I'm going to use the Wake Me Up Concealer by Rimmel. This is shade number 40, has a touch of pinky apricotness to it, so it's really good for lifting any under eye darkness and it's quite creamy as well with a little bit of touch of radiance in it so nice and light so just anywhere there's any dark shadows let's pop a little bit of this and blend in well don't really have any dark shadows <laughs> Lucky. And then I'm going to use the Secret Camouflage, this shade, just for more general concealing. So this is good because it's not light reflective, so if there are any little red marks or any pigmentation, there's a tiny little mark there, you can just go in and conceal those without actually making your foundation look any heavier. And I'm just going to set very lightly with a mattifying powder not too much, just any concealing that I've done, just in this area. Not overloading, just a touch. Nose and chin. And a little bit on forehead. So for eyes, I'm going to start with this um, eye colour stick. This is by Burberry. This is going to be a really good um, base so it's going to set and be great for using powders on top or you can also use obviously an eye primer something like NARS Pro Prime is good and if you've got very oily eyelids then you could use both you could do a layer of um, primer and then something like a cream shadow which sets like this as a second layer and this way your eyeshadow you can be sure it's going to stay on all day I'm taking this all over the lid. It's a really beautiful rosewood colour. So onto shadow, and I'm going to use this palette by Stila, which is the windows, eyes, the windows, the soul. I'm going to use it with this brush, an artist brush. Just started using these a couple of days ago, and I really like them. I'm going to use a matte dark brown with a slightly shimmery cocoa colour. Looks like that. It has a touch of shimmer in. And I'm going to start just to blend that into the socket line and with these brushes you can sort of dab and buff 
and I find they're kind of quite foolproof if you're not brilliant at um, blending. So just enhancing a little bit there at the socket line. And then I'm actually going to use one of the bigger brushes just at the side just to blend out. Just going to put a touch of gold just in the corner. Just look up for me, Gary, because you've got a little bit of goldy tones in your dress, I noticed. So I'm halfway through the eyeliner now. I'm using the Chocolate Shimmer Gel by Bobbi Brown. I think this is a great colour for blue eyes and green eyes because it really makes them stand out. So as you can see, I've done one eye already. It's not too thin, not too thick. Really working it into the roots of the lashes there. And that's the most important thing. And don't worry about it being absolutely perfect because once you've got it on, you can use a little Q-tip. These are from Muji, these are my favorites. And you can just buff the end, buff the edges. Or you could use a little bit of powder, go back in with your brown powder and smudge. And at the outer corner, it's going to lift slightly up. And if you're not sure where to go, just think about following almost, look up for me, from underneath your eyes. Because you can put a little touch at the outer corner underneath as well. And then kind of just sweep up from there. And then you can blend that all in with a brush or a little Q-tip. Look up for me. I'm also doing on the wa upper waterline. I mean, this is not the nicest thing to do, look that way. But if you can do it, it really gives good definition. So lashes are obviously really important. I want to make a real big statement to make sure they're nice and dark and framing the eyes. I'm going to use waterproof mascara. This is Doll Eyes. And it has to be waterproof because the mother of the bride will <laughs> invariably cry. So I'm just really massaging this into the roots of the lashes. I'm starting underneath so that we don't get any, um, any of the transference on the top. And just keep going until you start to get a really nice lashy feel. If you don't have any lashes underneath, then you can just cheat it by using your, your uh, liner, the one we used earlier on, and you can just do little dots along the lash line and then buff them, and that almost looks like uh, lashes anyway. And then plenty, just look down for me, we're going to do plenty on the top lashes as well. Really getting it down into those roots. Don't be frightened to linger at the roots for a while. And then just zigzag out. So on to eyebrows, and you've just been on holiday, haven't you? Your eyebrows are... Have they lightened up in the sun? Yes, yes, yeah. Lots they of kind of disappear. Me, yeah, they, they often do if you're if you're already quite blonde. And lots of people ask me about blonde eyebrows and how to sort of, you know, paint them in and what should you do. How do you do yours normally? I do them with a the little angled brush yeah. and um, a powder. Yeah, so it's and just I kind quite of mix soft. it, yeah, very yeah. soft, and then I brush them through so it doesn't look too dark like slugs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's to get in the right colour. I'm going to use the little Suku pen so I can draw on lots of hairs to start and then I might use a powder as well. But it is about getting the shade right and I think if you have naturally blonde hair then you have to make sure it doesn't get too warm. When it gets very browny or chestnutty or too dark then mm. they start to look very obvious. So it is getting that kind of slightly ashy brown shade. Sometimes the sort of colour of the roots of your hair is a good colour to go for. Oh, that's handy. <laughs> so I'm just going to do lots of light strokes. And you're a style coach and you do lots of Mother's the Bride for personal shopping and things. I do. What's the biggest tip you can offer for... Don't leave it too late. Okay. <laughs> Some people call you up a week before. Yes. Oh it's my a bit goodness. stressful. <laughs> that must be so stressful. I try not to panic. <laughs> how what? How long do you recommend that the mother of the bride should? When should they start looking for their outfit? Um, I'd say about six months before, um, depending on the time of the wedding. It's now the season from about April to August mm. or July that you'll get mother of the bride type outfits. So yeah, say you wear for Goodwood and um, yeah, things yeah. like that. So they're just more choice. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, because I guess brides start a year before, and if you're the mother of the bride, then it's crazy to leave it less than six months to... Absolutely, they're like the second most important person. Yeah. And maybe. they need to feel really comfortable because they're um, on their feet all day. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. And, yeah, you have to feel very um, good about yourself. Absolutely. And they're quite nervous, so they, um, if they feel happy with what they're wearing they can forget what they're wearing and just have a lovely time exactly you've got to feel fabulous in what Mm. you're wearing great hair great makeup great outfit (laughs) so i'm just still doing these strokes i'm doing them lots of very fine strokes and then i'm going to do some in the center and some at the outer edge i like this one because it's waterproof so I think if you do get into a blind panic and start sweating at least your eyebrows are (laughs) aren't going to go anywhere (laughs) So now I'm just applying some bronzer, slightly in a sculpty way. I'm not contouring, but just to bring dimension to the face. Keep it really soft, and also it's nice and healthy. Gives a lovely glow. A little bit around the neckline. Touch there. It looks good in photos as well. This is a matte bronzer, so it's not a shiny one. So it is more about sculpting the face. I'm also going to use a blush. I'm going to use this quite apricot-y pink one, which I think will look really nice. A little bit of blush looks beautiful in photos. And just apply that in quite a big area, so not just on the apples, but make sure it blends out. So onto lips, you want your lipstick to last all day, so I'm going to use a pencil to really stain, give some shape just a natural colour. I'm going to go slightly pinkish because you have some pink in your dress. And I think it's going to suit suit your colouring. So in terms of shape, it's going to give a little bit more definition to the edge. But just remember to keep that line nice and soft because in photographs you don't want to a really harsh line around the edge. Just close and smile a little bit, like this. That's good. So for lips, I've chosen this really beautiful pink shade by Laura Mercier, and this is a long lasting formulation, so this will really stay put, particularly if you apply with a lip brush and really get into all those sort of nooks and crannies. And then you can keep this colour in your bag and just touch up if you need to. As a finishing touch, I'm going to use this very subtly shimmering powder. I mean, this is so subtle, so it actually works in photography. And I'm just going to use it onto your cheeks. This is um, Absolute Powder by Lancome. And I really like it for just enhancing skin without making it in any way glittery. A little bit onto your brow bone and just onto your cheeks. Touch on the centre of the nose, (laughs) a little bit there. (laughs) Okay, I think you're ready. I think you should put your dress on so we can see the whole look as it comes together. That is one hot (laughs) mother of the bride. You look sensational. The main tips are obviously to keep your skin looking, don't go too heavy with the foundation. Look for foundations with no SPF. Good bit of definition around the eyes is so important for the photography. So liner, plenty of mascara. If you want a couple of fake lashes, you can put them in. Brows as well, which really help to define the face. And a good lip colour and blush, because it really livens up your skin tone. A little bit of bronzer or, or blush, whatever thing you think suits. Thank you so much. Thank you for being a beautiful model and for sharing all your wisdom. I'm sure it'll be really useful and helpful to everyone. It's a pleasure.